A list of the topics, themes, and subject matter featured in this episode has been included in the description. absolute pleasure to welcome you not just back to Dimension 20 and our beloved dome, but back to our misfits and our magic for season two of Misfits and Magic. I am your game runner, your dungeon master, your pet mistress, Abria Iyengar, and with me once again are my magical misfits. Say hi, magical misfits! Hi, hi magical misfits! misfits. Oh my God, that feels good. We're back, we're yeah. back. Yeah. It's Hell cute. Yeah. Finally. Yeah. Woo. It's been three years. And it hasn't just been three years for all of us. In the world, our world, it has been three years since the events that we last left off with. The lulling, our holiday moment, halfway through your seventh and final year at the Gal Penny Academy. And a lot has changed. Your epilogues spoke to community, spoke to sharing the truth of the nature of magic with the wide world of NAMPS. Still feels bad to say. And in the intervening time, a couple things have happened. At first, no one believed you. No one believed the leaks, the PDFs that were spread, this strange truth that feels like a fad on TikTok, that anyone was capable of magic. If they just tried, if they read a little book, if they made a little wand, no one was pulling it off. And then eventually a couple people figured something out. People started to believe it. And more and more people figured out how to do small bits, cantrips, party tricks. But it was true. Magic was real. And anyone could do it. And there was a segment of the population hidden that always knew that. And then something incredible happened a year and a half in. And magic broke. Now, for the regular people in the world, the NAMPS, non-active magical persons, this is an unremarked moment. Nothing changed. Magic was always hard to pull off. It was chaotic. It wasn't understood. But for the wizards of this world, for the people that were raised inside of this, nothing was reliable. All of their lives sheltered away were for naught because magic could no longer support their admittedly overly whimsical society. And so things started to fall apart. And our pilot program, the proof of concept at Gal Penny, moved back. You graduated or left and never returned and lived your lives. Before we get started, I do want to talk a little bit about our system. We are using Kids on Brooms. But you know me, I always have to add a little, little funk, a little spin on it. So let's talk about the new mechanics. Ooh! So first things first, we've done a little bit of a rename. Uh, Misfits, magic. Uh, I renamed everything and gave them M's. So now when you hear melee, we're talking about fight, maneuver, mind, matter, magnetism, and metal are our original six. And we've added a secret seventh, Mark. 
This is, for those of you that are familiar with Dungeons and Dragons, uh, an equivalent to perception or insight. That idea of thin slicing and getting data and trying to clock something in the moment, new information's being given. And we're differentiating that from mind, our brain stat, because that's about processing and putting things together. Uh, so you all have a notice roll now. We have done away with the common fucking sense die. I'm so sorry, mm. but you are now in and of the real world, and things make as much sense as the real world does. So I'm not gonna give you extra bonuses, because you're not just doing silly little wizard shit now. However, your magic die still exists. Before, that was a d4 that you would add whenever you're attempting overt magic. We're gonna add a little spice. We're gonna make it a little funky. Someone made a season and integrated a bit of a die ladder thing, and I am nothing if not a copier. So I took Brendan's homework, changed it a little bit, and now your magic die is a ladder. So whenever you roll what we know to be a lucky break or an explosion, instead of re-rolling the same die and adding it to your like die total to beat my difficulty check, you're going to actually step up to the next die type and keep going. You can move your magic die from a D4 all the way up to a D20, and then something very fun happens. But I guess we can talk about that when we get to it. I really like when something fun happens. Fun I, happens. Fun. Fun happens fun. I love momentum, so we're gonna lean into that. Another M word. We're also adding a motive. There's an idea of yourself, and because we've jumped three years into the future, you all are around 20 to 21. You're just at that age where you're exiting the traditional understanding of childhood, and you're deciding who you want to be. Nothing is calcified in you, but you have a sense, a word, a thought of what you want to chase down. So I had you all pick a word before. I know them here, we'll address them like within the narrative. And when you reach meaningfully toward your ideal, your motive, or meaningfully away from it, you'll move across your track. Those of you that watched A Court of Bay and Flowers, this is a little bit like our reputation track. I like doing stuff that I've done before. <laughs> and we'll have mechanical uh, benefits. Are you sure about that? This feels, <laughs> this feels like This scary. feels totally normal and I don't know what you're talking about and I do wish I knew what it smelled like so bad. Oh. It's all I can think about. Hey, after. After! I thought I was getting into the chase. I'm like, I'll give you a moat of magic. A campfire Wait, log the morning after covered with a little bit of dew. Okay, now I feel like you're showing off and I want you to have one less to be. Great, I have zero. <laughs> Remember, you all begin every session with two motes of magic. Oh. Oh. Except now Brennan has Except one. Except now Brennan has one. Oh, he's gonna live uh. by it. I was just gonna forget. <clears throat> Anytime you fail a roll or attempt magic, you will add a moat of magic to your pile as you build momentum, as possibility swells within you. That sounded grosser than I meant it to. No, it swells within me. <laughs> oh, yes. Deep within me. Oh, yeah. Right, Swollen with magic. Kind of yeah. Towards the center of my body. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Turgid. Oh, no. That was it. That's it. Our last new mechanic is uh, a reflection of the growing stakes of this world. Normally, Kids on Brooms doesn't care that much about harm and doing damage and altercations, but I want the ability to hit you. So you all have a mangle track. You have harm. Mangle and... track. I needed an M word, and really, I was just so tired of being on thesaurus.com. <laughs> so you have a harm track, and death is on the table. If your character dies, we'll get into those mechanics, but they have been built. So be bold. Mm. It'll be OK. It's an adventure story. Hey, do you want to smell my board map? I do! Really? Yeah. 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 Just take two tokens. Something about talking about death mechanics. Oh, it does smell really good. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, you can have two. Oh, two. Two modes. <laughs> these, are, these are keeping me alive right now, okay, right? <laughs> these are gonna be between me and death. It's gonna come down to these two modes. We're gonna look back at this moment. We are back. We know what we're doing for the most part, so let's begin as we did three years ago with a little where are you now? And we're better to start than with Whitney Jammer. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Jammer, yes. you are in Chicago, Illinois. You are a college student. Mm -hmm. Basketball player? Of course. At Roosevelt <laughs> University? 
Go Lakers. <laughs> <laughs> Proudly repping. Of course. The green and white. Mm -hmm. You've had a good time. You left Galpenny after the events of the holiday special and did not return to graduate. The kind of whole thing around them mm -hmm. not letting us leave kind of made me go, I don't know if I can stay at a place where my ability to come and go is not under my control. Interesting. Um, Interesting. That's a good note. Well, you left, you made it to Roosevelt, and you've had a successful and flourishing career as a basketball player. You're close to home, and things are going well. So let's take a little look at that as your team has recently completed what is normally just sort of like a charity day that lots of sports do to do like little public ops and yeah. to reaching out to the community. Of course. At a after school center in the south side of Chicago called Leap. Mm. Let's explore every possibility. <laughs> It is for sort of inner city youth ages 6 to 14 and tries to cover all of the bases. It makes sure that they have like places to study and access to tutors and uh, like arts and extracurriculars. And because of the events of the last three years, a little bit of study of magic. Yeah. And I think that's where you've really shined and leaned in. Mm -hmm. And though it was normally uh, Roosevelt's idea to show up maybe once a month with a camera crew or two and use it for fodder for the website's blog, you've spent time here. And as everything wraps up and the majority of your teammates leave, Jewel runs up to you. Jewel Morin is a like, like, middle-aged, sort of wiry Panamanian woman with long curls and that level of like no gray hair that you know is artificial. Mm -hmm. Like the hair is too jet black. Oh, I know, uh, we all know that. Yeah, yeah, she's just at the edge of crow's feet and you're like, I should be seeing more here. Mm -hmm. But it is glistening. It's glistening and she runs up to you. She's wearing like an oversized leap shirt tied, splattered with like finger paint and applesauce and just, there's probably just a child sort of attached to her ankle that she's dragging and just comes over and goes, ah, ah, what's going on? Hi, hey. this is, it's so nice that you make the time and bring the team and, you know, the kids love you. This has been so great. Well, it's good for the guys, because I think yeah. sometimes when we're in the gym, things get a little intense, and so yeah. here it's all play. You know, it's like street ball kind of stuff, you know? <laughs> street ball. Chilling. So thank you, honestly, for giving us the opportunity. You're so, you're so sweet. She just gives you a little pat on the cheek. Oh, stop. Reaches up to you. Uh, I, I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted to ask if there was anything we, we could do for you. I know that seems really weird. It's just, we're just really happy you're here. And I know spring break's coming up and then it's the summer. And I don't want to presume on your time. I know you're very busy, but if there's anything we could offer, like a, I don't know, a summer job. I don't know how your school works, if you can have work, yeah, but. I, I think so. Uh, that's, uh, Tula, that's so kind of you. Uh, I, you know, I've been kind of in it with the season, so I haven't really yeah. been thinking about bigger stuff. But oh, sure, I understand. Like, no, but that don't worry cool. about it. It's... That could be cool. Like I would, it could be fun to like come here. I mean, this is pretty close to home. You know, it's like two train stops. So I, we, could, I, that honestly sounds kind of, that doesn't sound bad at all. Really? Yeah. Easy, easy. So what, do, what do you need me to sign? <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, you know what? I can find something. Just, yeah. You don't have to sign it. Hey, you don't have to sign hey, it. Hey, okay. little man, little man. Yeah. Hey, what's going on, dude? What's going on? There's just a little kid. You know, he goes by Bug. Yeah. He's just got a really strong allergy problem and uh, has a little crusty part of the like his little leap uh -huh. shirt that he constantly is wiping his nose out on. Mm -hmm. His name's Greg. Yeah. Uh, hey. Boop, boop. Yeah. I'm gonna reach down in my backpack, no. uh, into my duffel bag. Don't put me down. Well, are you <laughs> holding him? I'm gonna hold him in one hand. One hand. One He's hand. under you exactly. like Just a like, football. Exactly. <laughs> Great. Grab out Spalding and say, hey, hey, yeah. go get him. And I'm gonna throw it. And Spalding knows the drill. Spalding just keeps rolling. Just don't <laughs> don't come back, Spalding, until 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 Boog is tired. <laughs> 
bug, you can feel the moment Spalding goes out. This is not the first time. Of course. This is a perfect diversion tactic. <laughs> you can actually feel like a dog that's like ready to be let off a leash. Like he is like just sort of jerking yeah. under your arm and is like, <laughs> let me go! All right, all right. Yeah! And just takes off. And he is like going under other like teammates' legs and like crawling under. He will not come back ever until Spalding says something. It's beautiful. It's a lovely moment. You see like some of your teammates, you have uh, around you Aaron Brooks Park, mm -hmm. who uh, along with you is a captain, sort of like court captain versus, he's a senior, mm -hmm. he's your power forward. So he has the sort of captaincy by seniority, but because you are the point guard, everyone looks to you. Mm -hmm. And he kind of gives you a little nod and looks at Spalding, gives you another little dot. I have a question for you. Yes. Do your teammates know your sort of backstory? Your affiliation magical with magical school. Yeah. And, you know. Did you tell anyone? I think I've talked about it. I think that I get clowned a lot whenever <laughs> yeah. I talk about. It. Like I don't. Think, I don't think I'm like I, I fought a giant like half bear creature. And people are like, yeah, really? That's cool. But I think that the vast majority of my adventures that I went on with uh, my fellow Namps, I think have been kind of, I don't, I don't think there is a lot of talk about it. I don't okay. think it's, it doesn't get me anything. It, I think it mostly gets me made fun of. <laughs> and so I think I've stopped. I now have a magical basketball that I tell people I got on Timu and, <laughs> and is AI, because it's straight up easier. It's way easier. Amazing. Saves us two hours of me trying to explain how I got a magical basketball. So you set Spalding down and roll it. After about 30 seconds of uh, defying physics, you make eye contact with Aaron. Can you just give me a magnetism roll? You got it. Let's call it difficulty of six. Oh, well. Here we go. That's a four, and I'll spend it. Are you gonna spend tokens? Why not? Okay. It's the beginning. Uh, let's succeed. Uh, <laughs> we'll start this campaign off on the right foot. Amazing. Uh, we pass. With a six, you see Aaron sort of appraising you and Spalding. And then there's just a little more eye contact. He's gonna slide up to you after a while and be like, Ayo. That's good. Like, I know that you said it's a remote control car AI or whatever, mm -hmm. but like, how? Doc, have you been on Timu? <laughs> no. They got so much shit, dude. <laughs> Timu runs deep, all right? Look, you gotta I... go deep, deep, deep in there. You gotta go to the sellers that ain't, they're not sponsored. All the stuff at the top, that's sponsored. If you keep going, you'll find it. Look, I hear you and I feel you, mm -hmm. but like, magic. Yeah. Like, okay, I gotta be super honest. My sister, Hester, has been asking me to ask you about this mm -hmm. for a hot second. Mm -hmm. And Hester is a sophomore, so she's actually a year younger than you, a pure sophomore. Um, she's short, uh, half Korean, half black, uh, with like, just sort of one of those like very severe haircuts that you know she has to get trimmed constantly because it's very precise. Mm -hmm. She's an early education major, so that explains why she loves coming to leap with you all mm -hmm. every time you rock up and a couple times when you're there and the rest of the team isn't. Mm -hmm. Damn. And you can kind of feel Aaron's weird energy as he brings her up and kind of looks at you to see if there's any kind of reaction. I mean, Esther's cute, but you know, not never during the season, you know? All right. Anyway, I would prefer, like, just wait till I graduate. Like, let me just be out of this. But like, okay, that's not the point. She said that I need to ask you if you like do magic though. Like, for real. Like, like, just be fucking for real with But, me. like, what's do magic, you know? I don't know, man. You... Have I done magic? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can you do it right now? Dude, I'm not trying to make... Like, today's about... To Every be possibility, dog. <sighs> well, you really want to see some magic right I now? I do. 
Bro. And he pulls out his phone. I, come on, dude. <laughs> I'll, I'll do what? magic. I don't want practices to become, yo, jam or do magic, all right? That's my thing. I, I, do I do magic? Yeah, dog, on the slot, I do magic. But I'm not trying to do, I'm not trying to make my thing magic. Dude, come on, put the phone down. I'll do magic if you put the phone down. Put the phone down, I'll do magic. Straight up, straight up, put the phone down. I'll do magic right now. Bet, dog, bet. I'll do magic right, right now. I'm honestly, I'm about to curse right now because how serious I am about doing magic if you put the phone down. I cursed earlier, so that's kind of on me. There okay. are a lot of kids yeah, there. Yeah, a lot of and kids. And he slides it it's in. It's hard. All right. Uh, do I have... What I have my wand on me? That's the question. What I have now, my let me wand be very on. clear. In this world where magic is sort of broken, it's harder to do. It's chaotic. Mm -hmm. However, your wand mm -hmm. just makes it a little bit easier. Always has. You could attempt it without it. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get my wand out. <laughs> I mean, I carry my magical basketball, right? I got my wand in here somewhere. Shit, shit. Uh, I think it's wrapped in like two pairs of socks. Like it's, it's. There's a just two tube socks that have just are it. Then I just leave it there. I don't really take it out that often. So, re reach in, pull it out. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm trying to be right. so quiet about this. Right. You have a full little magic wand. <laughs> Hey, dog. Yeah, dog. How you, how you think you do magic, dog? Well, you think you just make magic happen? Dumbass. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Don't talk like language. me. Language. Don't talk like language. me. Language. And children start chanting language and running away. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to try. I would just like to guide the toys back into the container from which they came. Amazing. I would love for you to give me... It feels like a maneuver roll. It feels like a maneuver roll. <laughs> that, that, that tracks. Now that's pretty comp Like, give me a number of toys. If you want to move all of them, you can. The DC will be unfucking real. Uh, yeah. Let's do three. <laughs> I'm trying to move three. I think one, one is one could be the wind. Let's go three. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's a little RC like Hot Wheels car with like a wheel missing and a block and like a snapped purple crayon mm -hmm. for all kind of left, and you can push it into a little container. Mm -hmm. So it's a simple push. I'm gonna say the DC for this, 15. 15, okay. Maneuver yeah. plus your magic Plus die. magic. Which would you like me to roll first? Your call, baby. All right, we'll start with the maneuver. <sighs> That's a five? Okay. Not impossible. Not impossible. Magic, it's a ladder. <laughs> it's magic. a ladder. Three, okay. I'm gonna spend one to explode. Perfect. That gets you us know. to a D6. D6. Yep. We'll roll that. You're, at, you're currently at nine. And that's only a one. We ten. cannot get there. Uh, so that's 10 total? 10 total. 10. You concentrate and you just feel something, there's something behind it that feels sticky mm. or blocked. It's like a muscle. Like when you do a full body workout, but like a smaller muscle that hasn't been used in a really long time gets overly sore and you feel something inside you, like a muscle you don't use very often. Mm -hmm. Too sore to pull it off. Mm -hmm. You good? I feel like you talked a lot. Yeah, what's up? What's mm -hmm. that? Are you watching it? Watch it. Don't okay, look at I'm me. Look, look at over it. Here. I'm look looking at it. it. And I'm. Look at it. Stop looking at <laughs> Am me. Am I look looking at, at the right thing? Because, like, if Man, the magic bro, is I'm not going to do it. 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 Wait, don't put this on me. What's up, dude? It's not on me that it didn't happen. <laughs> it, well, I, well, it could have happened, all right? But I don't know the energy you're giving off. Man. She talks so much about how she thinks you're secretly, like, very magic. And then you pull out a wand, and I was so, like, Okay, maybe. And the basketball. It's AI. I don't know, man. Like, what were you trying to do? Like, turn it into a pumpkin or something? Like what, the toys? Yeah. I was trying to put them in the container. Like a, like this? And he just kind of walks <laughs> over and just kind of nudges it? Yeah, like that. Okay. Oh, I could do crazier shit, but I, you know, I'm not gonna Can do that. Can you? That's no, fine. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to get into a Yeah, flight. damn, Aaron, okay. you know? Language! <laughs> sorry. Uh, and I'm the sorry. kids start chanting, Don't Language! Talk like me. <laughs> Oh. And it's right about this time. I'm gonna ask for a mark check. We're gonna make the DC four. Okay. Flow. 
that's low. Wait, do I, I take an adversity you token? You take a because token of... because you failed and a token for attempting overt magic. That's a one. <laughs> I'm gonna... You gonna do it? I'm gonna... You can get a token if you just let I'll it die. I'll take the token, I'll take the token. Take the token for I'm failure. Gonna, I'm gonna let this go. It's okay. I just, I like because the you are so deep in your explanation game that you don't notice what Aaron notices until you see his eye line has moved from you and is tracking something across the room. The funky town is that. Uh, I'm gonna look at it. You turn around and you see. It looks like origami day is a thing that's happened at Leap many times. Mm -hmm. what, a, what a fun little adventure in multiculturalism and manual dexterity for children. Mm -hmm. But this is very specifically like a bird and it seems to articulate and flap across the room. Mm. And it's moving much like Spalding under its own devices. Well put her hand on Aaron's shoulder be like, what? Hey, hey. Yeah? This is bird stuff. <laughs> you want to talk about magic shit? This is magic shit, though. When they send birds, they're trying to send messages. They're trying to let you know what's up. Shut up! What? And he's gonna, like, push you off and no, try shit. to no, chase no, down no, the bird. No, I'm gonna chase after you. Okay, no. it's gonna be a brawn roll. I'm okay. gonna say the difficulty is what's 12. Wrong? Oh, sorry, matter. Okay, great. Your matter roll, difficulty of 12. Okay to beat him to the bird. Great. I like that mind is over matter. Mm. That's fun. Mm. We have fun here. I'm never gonna remember any of the words I came up with. Delightful. Oh. <gasps> That's a one. <laughs> Amazing. Something you... Motes matter. Well, let me be clear. Has Jammer sort of changed physically across the three years? What's our height? What's our I think still, sort of physicality? Still six foot, hasn't changed much. I think it's put on, the year he went to Galpenny was supposed to be a bulking year, <laughs> but then he was just ordering McRibs all the time. <laughs> I think he's like still around the same size, maybe slightly more muscular, uh, but he did fracture his toe oh. in his first year. So, but he's recovered for the most part. But I think he's he can be sometimes more trepidatious with his body than mm. he was before. For. I think it's a mixture of that, of knowing that like a little injury can sideline you for a year, and this room is a maze of little stuff that could kill your next season. Mm -hmm. So you don't feel bad that you lose a step to him. He's also 6'5 yeah. and a senior, uh, so he's going to absolutely uh, mow over you, jump up off one of these low little like homework tables and snatch the bird, crumpling it out of the sky. Ah, uh, bro, it's like a it's message. Oh, they got messages. What does it say? What does it say? What do you mean? What's this Where's the message? And he's just holding a crumpled, like, dark gray piece of paper. What message? Me, hold, give it to me, man. No, I want it. I want magic. Bro, it's... Can't turn it into a wand and he starts twisting it. Bro, stop. What? Bro, stop. It's clearly some kind of important ass message. The last... Language, please. It's like... Language! It's... Language! It's the, it's like last time they sent me an owl and it had like a whole ass note. Language, uh, it had a whole ass note. Do you want to talk outside? Yeah, can we walk You're play? strong. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, bro. Jewel's in the corner. She looks like she's going to hit you. Yes, Jewel, please. I found papers. Okay. Go outside. Thank you. Okay, everyone, we're gonna, please stop yelling language. Uh, we're gonna have a little snack time. Stop yelling language! And you see that the moment you sort of move out of the room, she quickly loses her cool, like you are a large part of the like chill energy of this place. And you step outside and you're just sort of at like a little half basketball court around the corner. And it's like, okay. I, well, I, I'll, show, I'll share the magic with you. You just gotta show it to me so I can see what's going on. Just offers it to you. I, uh, I unfurl it. The moment you touch it, you feel that pulse, a connection to magic that's solid and real. And it almost has like the flavor behind it of what you remember from your time at Galpenny. And 
as you go to open it, it helps you. It sort of uncreases itself. You feel a little heat on the paper as it try to, tries to smooth out its own wrinkles, and it unfolds into a note. Mm. It just says, hey, Whitney, hope you're doing good. This is Dr. Boodle. Mm. Um, I could put that at the, you'll read it at the end. I don't know why I'm rambling. It's just a note. I would love if you could come. I have a proposition for you. It would be so great if you could come to these coordinates. Everyone will be there. It's very funny that like this note has all of, it's like, it's ellipses every couple words. Okay. He could have just, just started again. Just like a again. classic, like talking into Siri. Yeah. Just like <laughs> ramble, comma, like, okay. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I'm caught up. It's very strange how much this doesn't feel like a meticulously curated note, but like a hastily uh, stream of conscious dictated letter. There's a code at the bottom, and if you put it into your computer, it should make tickets for the Faroe Islands. I cannot wait to see you. I have a little business proposition. I hope you're doing well. This is Dr. Boodle from Galpenny, your teacher, if you remember from Chimeron. It's so, I hope you're so good. And at the bottom, Dr. B. <laughs> Chamber just gets a little quiet and I think nostalgic for that time. And his friends, who I think did kind of come to him in this moment, uh, as he looks over the note. Hey, uh, so the magic? Oh. You just put a, you put a note in your Can pocket. Can you see it? What? Yeah, I don't read cursive good. Oh. It's, uh... My old one of my one of like the the dudes who I used to who used to teach us, he's asking me to come to the just like hand out to the Faroe Islands. The what? The Faroe Islands. He immediately pulls out his phone and is starting to look yeah, it up. Yeah, can I honestly can you look it up? Yeah. I don't know where it is either. Dude, it's by Iceland. Shit. <laughs> You're just gonna go to Iceland? Or not Iceland? Next to Iceland? I mean I got free And just keep zooming in. I mean spring break's coming up, but I got free ticks. Like for the homies? Here, one second. I'm gonna scan with my QR code. How many tickets do I have? One. Uh, Business class. Oh. Uh, no. Nah. There's a layover. <laughs> nah. What do you mean? Is there a layover? There's a layover in Copenhagen. <laughs> Uh, but that, honestly, that means I get to fly business class on two flights. What is that? <laughs> oh, I don't understand. Sorry. I'm feeling very left out of whatever's happening I'm, here. Uh, he is asking for help on like a class project or something. And I mean, I was just gonna spend the spring break just working out and stuff, but I don't know, shit. It could be fun, just a couple days in whatever the Faroe Islands are, yeah. you know? You good? Like, yeah. is that okay? Yeah, I think I'm gonna go to the Faroe Islands. <laughs> shit. Okay. I'm going to Vero Islands. That's weird, but tight. Yeah. Okay. That kind of counts as magic. Cool. Like, I feel like you did magic. Do, is that, is that kind of magic? I'll count it. Because, like, the bird was, like, flying, and then it was wrinkled. Yeah, so it was like a note. So that's kind of the, that's the other shit. I guess I, pushing wasn't pretty lame, but I was trying. It I, wasn't. Like, I get it. Yeah. I can't do magic. I try. Did you try? Yeah, I mean, yeah. When we all kind of found out it was something, like, yeah, yeah I remember, like, trying for, like, I don't know, like once or twice. And it See, that's what really it felt bad. like. It felt like everybody tried a couple times yeah. and then it didn't like click. And then, I don't know, it's been, it's been weird for a while, so. But it's just a couple days? Yeah, it's just a couple days in Faroe Islands, you know? But you'll be back. Yeah. And I get to fly business class. That's kind of tight. They, I think that they give you champagne. <gasps> Shut up. They give you champagne. That's fucking cool. This is free. You ain't got to pay for free? it. Free? Okay. Bro. All right. See? Bring some back. Honestly, for the homies? I'll bring some. I'm gonna bring if back. If you don't, I'm gonna whoop your ass. <laughs> okay. I'm okay. gonna bring you back champagne. I'm gonna take champagne from, from the plane. Yes. And bring it. Like a little one. Exactly. We'll have, we'll have a, it'll be. We'll to tell everybody. Tell everybody, Jam, and bring it back champagne. All I'm, right. Okay. I'm gonna. And then he just immediately sort of turns and walks away and starts shouting down the teammates that have like sort of headed back down the street and are headed over to Roosevelt. Uh, I think Jammer takes a second. There's that excitement and. Uh, kind of anxiety and the, the, those mixed feelings that just come with being like, oh, we're gonna go, we're gonna do, we're gonna go back. We're gonna go back and see some people who haven't seen in a while. When you think about that, as you head back and make your plans, and we'll move from you to go catch up with Kay Tanaka. 
three years. It's a long time. A lot of things are possible. A lot of things were made possible by your actions. In what direction did Kay move after Galpenny? You stayed, yeah? Yes, graduated? I stayed and I graduated. Uh, and uh, due to unforeseen circumstances, I uh, am uh, single. Whee! And uh, I uh, took an Airstream trailer uh, because I'm very, I gotta, I gotta keep on moving. Gotta, gotta be on the move. Uh, can't stay in one place for too long or they'll find me. They will find you. You aren't just Kate Tanaka. You are Itsy Bitsy Spider. You are famous online. Not you. Itsy Bitsy Spider is famous. The patron saint of digital hedge mages. You have guarded and provided stewardship and a sneaky little point in the right direction for those online that have desperately sought out access to magic after the revelation that you and the rest of the pilot program brought into the world. And it keeps you online, it keeps you in the dark, a little spider touching all of the webs that you've put out there and someone has to guard it, so why not you? And that's been your mission for three years. So we will find you in your Airstream trailer out on the outskirts of Zagreb, Croatia. You are a digital nomad and you stay as long as you think is safe and you spend your days plugged in. So we push in through the window and we see you at your display. Several monitors, hands out, and in a level of trance as you split your attention again and again and again, watching forums, watching feeds, videos on several tabs, on several screens of people attempting magic and failing and succeeding. Questions about the PDFs that you all put out about well, what could this mean? What are they asking for? Would they say a material component? How would one even go about making potions? Is there a way to do this without access to fire? Do the verbal components of spells have to be in English? A thousand thousand questions, but none of them beyond your purview because it's a bitsy spider is so prolific, so omnipresent, that people think you are dozens or hundreds of people watching and helping. And as you move through your duties, you just feel a little tap on your shoulder as a slightly mangy looking chipmunk wearing a thread worn sweater with leather patches at the elbow, just gives you a little tap. Excuse me. Hi. Kay. Oh, Kay. Theodore, yes. Ah, what? Ah. Hi. 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 Hello. I am in five forums right now. Yes. What do you need? Okay. Um, I was just, I uh, just wanted to see if you wanted a cup of tea or something. Uh, maybe take a little break. I look around and there are four different mugs of tea mm -hmm. in various states of undrunkenness. Mm -hmm. Yes, tea would be lovely. Can Thank you. you. Sorry, I don't mean. I don't mean to press. Would you like to? I don't know. Push back, because I. We've done this. Uh, Any kind of gestures at two of the mugs, where I will bring it over, and I just. I'm not trying to complain. It's so nice to be here and to help you out. But uh, you will kind of just look back at the screen. It takes a lot. The mugs are as big as I am. I'm just a little chip mug, just a little guy. <laughs> And I bring it over and then you don't drink it. And it's fine because I know you're very busy and you have so much to do. And I just, if I'm being honest, I don't really understand what you do because I'm a little guy. Mm. <laughs> I got a thing in Australia. I think it's from Sydney. Yeah, can you take like a little bathroom break or something? Mm -hmm. Like a little one? Oh. Just like a moment? Can we just go outside? I would love some fresh air. It's close in here. I, yeah, but signal not so great out there. Huh? 
Sigmund's not so great out there. Yeah, you, know, you can take a break. It's fine. Look, it's, it's fine. They'll be fine for a couple more minutes. Teddy. It's 10 minutes. Listen. It's 10 minutes. And he pulls I... out, he like reaches into his little tiny little sweater pocket and pulls out a comically large pocket. Whoa. Just what it does, Sig. What if we just take 10 minutes? <laughs> this is my grandpappy's. <laughs> we just, what if we just take 10 little minutes? And he reaches over to like touch your hand and he kind of drops the giant pocket watch on his foot and you're just like, Okay, well, you, okay, you get eight minutes. Eight minutes? Yeah. It's uh, nine? It, it is what, it's what your uh, grandpappy Ermintrude would want. I, oh, you were, yeah. you remember. It's yeah, only yeah. nice that you remember. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's go to the outside. Mm hmm The meat space. Mm hmm Okay. And he kind of jumps onto your arm and is just sort of patting you, but you can mm -hmm. feel just, the little sharp claws of a small woodland creature digging in like, uh -huh. Yes, okay, we should need to go outside, but we must return post haste because Theodore is- Why are you talking like that? Ma? And he's gonna run up your like sort of steepled hands and get right on your face and he just kind of grabs you right on your cheeks. Why are you talking like that? <laughs> it's like, what? I yeah, am like, this... remember we met when you were uh, three? three years ago and yeah. you talked normal. And now it feels like you're in one of those motion pictures. One of those, like a, like a, a movie. Mm-hmm. 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 Yes. Well, the grandiosity of the tasks that we do here are in fact, yes, epic enough to be chronicled in some movie someday. But for now, we uh -huh. remain anonymous in the shadows. Yeah, the shadows. No one's gonna. Uh -huh. Outside, please. Okay. All right. I'm an animal. Okay. And I want to go outside. Oh, oh boy, well, oh, buddy. Okay, sure, 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 sure. Uh, let me just uh, get to a good save point in Elder Scrolls. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Okay, 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 okay. We're going, we're going, we're going. I need you to make a grit roll. Okay. I'm going to say the difficulty is 10 as, like, Teddy grabs into your cheeks and you feel like he's ready to kind of just pop the skin. Oh, it's a six. Oh, no, a seven. That'll be a seven. You feel just that edge of pain and maybe that little brightness that, like, he might have torn the skin. You know that in the times that you've torn yourself away from your very important work, Teddy's not been doing great. He's a little familiar. Ripped from the wind in the willows, and now your job would have you. And as you're thinking all of this, you step out with him outside, and it's night. Ah! <laughs> you remember walking into your trailer, and it was like noon. So maybe it's been a couple hours. What's the, uh, what is, what is, what is the date? What is the? You check your phone. Roll a D6 for me. Four. This, it's a, is your blessing and your curse, your grit, the result of your extreme focus. You have been inside, online, uninterrupted, for four days. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, good. Mm-mm, <laughs> mm-mm, mm-mm. Good, good. Yes. Uh. Yeah, you, you, the air is nice, right? It's nice, it's a nice night. And you look out and you see that like where you've ended up setting up shop, again, you always have to have like a strong Wi-Fi signal. So you're very close to like a nice little downtown area and there's a bunch of like cafes and little beer gardens. And because it's night, people are like coming to dinner and meeting friends and they're all speaking and hanging out. They speak a language you don't speak. They see you as they pass you and acknowledge you and move forward. They don't look at you like they know you. That's good. That's good because that means that my work remains anonymous. <laughs> this is the world that you are not of. Meat space. Meat space. Meat space. And you get a little fresh air and Teddy crawls down and is like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make some tea and bring it out to you. Just hang out here. I get six more minutes. 
Oh, okay. Six. You, you, all six. All right. All right. Thank you. Anyway, hear him scamper away. Okay. What are you looking for? What are you looking at, Kay? Uh, it's just I'm not used to kind of being, you know, out in the the out out outside, you know. Are you staying present? Mm. Uh, I pull out some knitting needles and <laughs> immediately uh, start knitting a little a little tiny sweater and stuff. It's like, it looks like it's being printed, you know? Like in, <laughs> in fast motion. You begin knitting. Right. Gotta do something with the hands. <laughs> <laughs> and you're a little wearable. You feel like the buzz on your wrist as you get the little message. Mm. And another one. Mm. Another one. This isn't anything new, but you are always on tap. You're always on call. And some of your closest cohorts, your retinue, someone that goes by forethought. And of course, your other cohort, MITS. And these are all abbreviations of internet handles and names that change across forums. But there are very few people that can reach out to you and they keep you updated constantly. Mm -hmm. New rumors and whispers that governments are beginning to formulate responses to the advances of magic. It's still chaotic. No one's really cracked the code of how to do magic consistently. But there are sects, cults, people that are building whole systems around the desire for or restriction of magic. And the longer you step away, the more notifications you get. Everything interesting in the world is happening, and you're not anywhere near any of it. Five minutes. Oh, okay, five minutes. I have, there's a whole little pants suit. Uh, it's, uh... <laughs> the world's fastest yeah, yeah. knitter. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's, uh, there's got some, I'm gonna add some sequins, I think. But uh, I know I told Teddy. I, don't know, I still got five minutes. Five minutes. Cool. cool. Okay. Great. Give me a mark roll. Difficulty of six. D four. Okay. Uh, so it's a three. I'm gonna use uh, that and. You're gonna roll it again. Yes. It's a lucky break, and you roll the D four again. D four again. Uh, ooh, that's another four. Amazing, so, another lucky break. Uh, roll it again. Uh, roll it again. Four. Ooh, that's another. Uh, Wait, wow. shut up. Let's yeah. go. Incredible. Oh my god. Oh, and that's another one. Oh my god. That's four fours in a row. Okay, six four fours. We're, the campaign's over, right? Yeah, we're done. You did it. Okay. Uh, you see the bad guy and you deal with it. <laughs> yeah, you and see. that's a two, so six, uh, sixteen. Wait, no. Eighteen. Eighteen. 18. Yeah. Eighteen. If I set a difficulty and you meet or miss it by more than seven, we're talking about critical failures and critical successes. So with a total of 18, you see it. Something against the very dark skyline. Soundless, getting closer. It has all of the moving uh, and intentionality of a drone. So perhaps they finally found you. Fuck! <laughs> It gets a little closer. Four minutes. It gets a little closer, and it's just, it's too small. You know the specs of every drone used by a government with a stated anti-magical bent in the EU. Is it lining up? And it gets a little closer. You've knitted another pantsuit, and then you see it, it resolves. A pair of wings. Paper? Metal? Magic. Woohoo! Woohoo! You make a little bird note? Yeah. <laughs> and it gently alights onto your hand and unfolds itself. And you feel that warmth under your palm. Real magic. Real magic unfolding just for you. Yeah. And note. <laughs> Hastily scrawled and awkwardly worded from Dr. Boodle. 
requesting your presence, asking several times if you're doing well and if you remember who he is, Dr. Boodle. He was there at your graduation. He was actually sitting next to you at your graduation. Hopes you're doing great. Has a little proposition for you. Hopes this finds you. You're very hard to find. The Faroe Islands. A code for a plane ticket. Everyone will be there. A proposition for you. Three minutes. Uh, okay, okay, uh, okay, okay. Teddy? Teddy? You turn around and Teddy. see that Teddy's just actually been slowly scratching at the Airstream trailer. <laughs> the door shut, and he oh. has not been able to get in. Uh, uh, Teddy? Hi. Hi. I'm Hi. sorry I couldn't reach the door. Um, and it feels like you didn't actually need the tea. I just wanted you to get some air. How are you? Yes, what good. is that? We're going to the Faroe Islands, Teddy. Oh. What? The 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 Faroe Islands, you know, yeah, right outside of Iceland. Yeah, we all know about that. The really okay. green. Yeah. Oh, oh. And you see, Teddy walks up and kind of touches it, and something like shakes across him. <sighs> That's nice. Yeah, feels good, doesn't it? <laughs> I've missed that. Yeah. We're gonna go. Yeah, we're gonna go. Just Every again, again. <laughs> We're gonna see everyone again? Yeah. We're gonna see everyone again? Yeah. Well, yeah, I think it says, it says, um, actually, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, we're gonna, yeah, everybody's gonna be there. Huh. Yeah, this'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. And Teddy asks for uppies and just sort of pats you gently on the shoulder and nuzzles into your cheek, seemingly more relaxed than he's been in a very long time. And you return into your trailer. All right, pack your tiny tablet. I don't want to bring it. Pack your tiny little tablet. You only gave me two apps and I don't like playing balloon pop. <laughs> yes, you do like balloon pop. Ow! <laughs> All right, well, just- He starts biting the edge of your thumb, not hard, but just ah. like, oh, passionately. I'll don't take it out on me because you, you don't want to see bird. him again. <laughs> I don't know what you're just gives. <laughs> Make some tea. <laughs> and from there, we'll cut away. <laughs> Move a little farther afield. Farther north again, to London, to Shepherd's Bush, to the BBC studios, where we find Sam Britton. Name change. Interesting. Yes, name change. Um, because her name is Sam and she lives in Britain. Oh, that's exactly... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I just that's... did it. Math tracks. Yeah, thank you. Thank you <laughs> so much. Adding it all up, it's right there. <laughs> yeah, take a token. Oh, Great. Thank Thanks for doing the math for me. What's up, bro? I'm eating today. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, your life in the last three years has been like your life for all of the others. Charmed. Things have gone well. You stayed and graduated from Galpenny. Returned to streaming. Made a little name change. And then was called up to the big leagues in a major way. And you are now the host <laughs> of a panel show on BBC4, a channel that is best described as not really sure if it's still on the air, but your internet following is huge. You are charming and graceful. It sometimes involves song. No one could accuse you of being a good singer, but they just have fun because you have fun. And who could say no to you? And so we're gonna pick up. And of course, you're about to begin Another episode of your smash sensation, Britain's Got Magic. <laughs> You're in the makeup chair and your producer. <sighs> he is a sweaty and terrible man. <laughs> <laughs> but Jamie Thorpe is a 30 year veteran in this field this was the last gig he was going to take on the way towards an early and well-deserved retirement. And jokes on him, this is the most popular show he's ever been a part of. And his job, his day-to-day, -day, is less about producing the show and more about 
managing you. And you are getting your sort of like last touches, a cute rosy glow. And Jamie stands beside you holding a clipboard and a phone. And he's on his little like headset, pouring sweat into an ill-fitting blue suit. <laughs> Miss Britton, we've talked about this for a while. I don't think it's appropriate for you to sort of declare an episode a musical without clearing it with the guests or me, if I'm being very honest. Okay. I just want to know more than 24 minutes before we're supposed to begin. Okay, but like you have like a cassette player, right? A what? Yeah, you know. I know what a cassette is. How do you know what a cassette is? You're what? 17? Um, I'm like 20. My mom has cassettes. Like, she would always use them, and it would be like, you're so beautiful, you're so powerful. So charming. Go away from that man, girl. Like Your American charm is absolutely devastating. I love it. I need a charm roll. Your difficulty is going to be 14. OK. 18. Of course. 18. Of course. Beautiful. <laughs> 18. All right, LL. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Love it. Love, Love it. it. You see it. There's no way to not notice it. He is just a portrait of a harassed man, and then something washes over him under your like direct and kind gaze. Just okay. Yeah. Okay. You want to? You can walk out and sing a little song. Mm. And you've got, today is Tony and Jamila. So oh. are they going to be singing too? I know that they're friends of yours, um, but they are here to sort of do rounds of promotions for mm. their work. So what, help me set expectations for them. Well, I mean, I don't want to like make anybody do music. I can just come out with T2 and mm. we can do like the opening the number. Yeah. You're going to sing with the pig again. It's so nice. Yeah. Just like okay. I can come out, I'm like holding T2. We can like do the opening number and then like I'll cross over. I'll like sit down. And then if like they want to join in on number number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, or twenty, then they can. Twenty music clubs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just, just twenty songs. It's going to be twenty. Don't yell at me. <laughs> don't yell at me! <laughs> Who's yelling at you? No one, don't worry about it. You're so good. I'm so good. yelling at you, that's not nice. No, never. I, my, it's my, he just takes out the headset and sort of holding it in his hands, holding the clipboard. It's my job to make sure whatever you want and need, you get, because anything you put your mind to seems to work <laughs> against all of my better judgment. So, 20, Musical numbers. Hmm. We'll, we'll find a musician. We'll, we'll get you some accompaniment. We don't need a cassette. Oh. Player. That's so great. Cool. Um, great. Is there anything else I can get you? Ooh. Where's T2, by the way? I oh. haven't seen him. Uh, oh, T2. Uh, the last time I saw T2, I hmm? think that he was helping out with wardrobe. What do you mean? Wardrobe. He's a pig. Like what I'm going to wear. No, I understand. Um, you say he's helping out in <laughs> snacks <laughs> with wardrobe. Yeah. Mm, mm hmm Yeah. He's helping out with styling, yeah. and this is going to be a musical episode. Delightful. Delightful. T2 just knows what I like. <laughs> you know what? Wonderful. I will pass this on myself, because <laughs> I need to pick up another headset. Uh, it's going to be great. You're doing a great job. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm really nervous, you know, because it's like, it's all big. It's... Yeah. BBC, you know. Yeah, you're on, you're on television. Yeah. You are doing... British big... Cinema? I don't know what it stands British for. British Big Cinema, yes. The British Big Cinema. Yeah, it's like... Gave you a TV show. Yeah. After you ate courgettes on Twitch. <laughs> and that's normal. That's great. Who's courgette? I love Americans. Mm -hmm. You're all wonderful. I'm going to go. If you need anything, I will send someone else to deal with it. Is that good for you? I can send Dawn. Oh, yes, and Dawn. I Perfect. haven't said hi to Dawn today. Oh, delightful. You haven't said hi to your assistant today. Great, thank you. I'm gonna, yes, yes, I'm flying her in now. And just puts his hand to his ear and stumbles away. And shortly thereafter, 
Dawn is going to walk up. She's 17. She's your assistant. She's treating all of this like learning on the job. She's a would-be content creator that doesn't really know what she wants to lean into and is happy to work for you for free and just sort of enjoy the perks of being around you because you've always been really generous with your time. Uh, she's going to come up. She's got like curly red hair, always up in a messy bun with like a stylus and a pencil and a pen sort of jammed through it, ready for anything. Uh, and just is going to walk up. She's wearing like a sweet little like matching skirt and sweater set. Good morning, uh, Sam. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing today? I'm so good. I just heard uh, from Jamie that it's going to be a musical episode. Yeah, we're going to do like 20, 30 something songs. 30. OK, that sounds so wonderful. Um, OK, so I was wondering, uh, I've had some more ideas. And she like pulls out her phone and just opens a little notes app. Ooh, love a so notes app. So I was app. thinking, um, what if I'm an animal trainer? And like, that's my thing. And I just make videos about training animals. And then maybe I could work with T2 um, because he already does so many good things and I could be like, oh, I'm training him. And that could like be my thing online. Oh, well, I would suggest, I think that that's great if you like it. Do you like animals? I mean, no, but I haven't really seen that that's like a thing. Like I haven't seen anyone else do it. You know what? I, I think that if, if you work with animals enough, you'll love them and you'll like, do you know anything about animals? <laughs> that doesn't matter. Um, so T2, like, really doesn't like being told what to do mm. is the only problem. Right, but I figured, like, if you told him to do it, and then I, like, he would listen to you, and then he would listen to me, and it would be fine. Look, I just want to be like you. Oh. Like, you're just so magical, and oh. you're so nice and so sunny and so sweet, and it just all seems to work out for you so well. And I was just wondering if maybe I could, like, use some of that, and I could have my own thing, and then um, we could... I don't know. You know what? You should do that. And, and I'll get T2. And uh, if I ask very politely, and if he's not busy working, worrying about like quarter one or quarter two taxes, because I still have to pay like tax friends, like a whole thing, <laughs> dual citizenship. Um, but if you want to, then yeah, we can totally make that happen. We will find a way. That's great. OK, thank you so much. Oh, maybe that can be next episode. That's so good. Maybe next episode, we can just like train you how to do animal stuff. I would love to be on camera. <laughs> Yeah. Sounds so nice. Yeah, let's do that next episode. Really? Go tell Jamie. <laughs> I'll go tell Jamie. Um, yeah. I also forgot to get um, your coffee or your dry cleaning, but like I can grab it later. <laughs> no one cares about that. The important thing is that we make sure that you learn how to train animals on camera for the first time in front of a bunch of celebrities you don't know. We're going to do that next. Maybe we can do that for the second half of this hour. <laughs> we can do You know what? You know what? We're gonna we're gonna cut it down. We're gonna cut it down from forty songs to twenty songs, <laughs> and the rest of it we're gonna have it be you and T two. Okay, great. This is wonderful. Oh, tell Jamie he's gonna be so excited. Okay, bye, Don. <sighs> Are you okay? And you see that Don just sort of doubles over <laughs> next to you. I don't think I. Today? What are you doing? What are you doing? Why not? What else are you doing? I don't know. I like I have rivalers. I have things to do. Well, I just like no. Like, like I got your mail. What no? I like, have to go pick up your dry cleaning and get your coffee like you asked for. No, that's fine. I'll just like grab coffee somewhere. No, else. I'll do that. I'm gonna do that. And then uh, you just sort of see that she puts down, like things. She starts pulling stuff out of her pockets. Like yeah, I got, I got your mail and here's all your notes. I'm just gonna go on. We'll try again tomorrow. I have other ideas. I don't want to do that. Oh. I'm gonna find T2. Okay, well, tell Jamie we're not doing it then. I'm not gonna. <laughs> and she walks away. Can I get a brains roll? You sure can. The second half of the hour really got me. <laughs> I could feel Jamie being like, it's 23 minutes. <laughs> I'm gonna say your difficulty is a 10. Okay, well, I rolled a three. Oh, plus what so is a four? Okay. The four. Yeah. There's something around Dawn. She's so eager and excitable, and it feels nice to reach out and help her. But it's never quite right. It never feels the same. You do this, you have celebrity friends, you air to a full studio audience week after week, 
and you're loved and adored online. But it all feels so removed. Dawn couldn't even be in conversation with you for more than a couple minutes. Jamie's never had a conversation with you that didn't require you to soothe some uh, frazzled part of him. You've always been so good at connecting with people and you're doing that now. But it just feels like there's something missing. You can't quite figure out what it is. You look at the pile that she's left and a little crumpled piece of dark gray paper twitches. I'm a poke it. Poke. And it nuzzles, sort of like shifts out from under bills and invitations to premieres. And a little wounded seven inch bird hobbles out. Mm. Made of paper, ornately folded. Wounded? It looks like part of the like crumpling on it under like those other things has sort of bent its uh, wing oh. awkwardly. Oh. Um, hey, dude. Um, and I'm just gonna reach out and like cut my hand and see if like the bird will hop into my hand. And hops in and settles down almost like it's roosting. Hey, do you know the sunny parts of I Got You, Babe? <laughs> and it looks up to you. Kind of quirks its little bird face and quickly unfolds into a letter, refusing to engage with the conversation. <laughs> oh. Oh! You see a note, much like the others. Dr. Boodle inviting you to the Faroe Islands. All your friends will be there. And he has a proposition for you. Cool. Oh, business class. Yeah. Yeah, that's... <laughs> the ticket is for tonight. Oh, oh. Just a little question. Do you go now? Do you put all of this aside and leave? Oh. I want to see my friends. Oh, there is, like, an audience. And, like, Tony really doesn't like to be left waiting. I could do an opening number and then skadoots. I'll skadoots after the opening number. <laughs> you put the letter aside, resolved to stay for the first song of your musical episode. Yes. And as Tony Danza joins you. It was Tony Danza. I saw Blair. <laughs> I was hoping it was Blair. Guys, like, Jamila Jamil and Tony Blair. Blair. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> Tony Danza is As on Tony... Britain's Got Magic? Yes. Promoting what? <laughs> oh, wow. He's not actually promoting That's anything? That's where you get off. That's where Lou Wilson yes, gets I, off the I, bus. I, Why would Tony Danza get booked? He's not promoting it. <laughs> Why would Tony? I'm thinking more from Tony Danza's perspective. Tony's flying all the way from his beautiful house in Long Island yes. to, <laughs> to, to London? Yes. For what? Just to hang? To sing Spring a up? song with his good friend Sam. He's oh. got to sing 21. One minute song because the host just laughed after the opening. Well, thank God Tony was there. I'll tell you, he's the boss. <laughs> Not bad. Not, Not bad. bad at all. Not bad at all. Hey, go ahead and take a moat. That was Damn great. Right. Thank Damn, hey. uh, to our viewers at home, Tony Danza was an actor in the 1980s. Stop it. They can Google it. Google it. Angela. And as he begins, <laughs> I hate that. That's it. That's I'm the so thing. Sorry. We're cutting from that. I'm so sorry. You sort of just say Angela, and he continues to sing about how he doesn't really have a thing to promote and was excited to spend time with you. And he sings alone as you simply leave the studio. Say, Britain, I loved your mukbang. No! <laughs> Brendan, get out. <laughs> it's been real. Thank you so much. Live! <laughs> this way? We move, finally, away from Tony, singing by himself. See the problem? little hand in my... <laughs> Far away from London and big British cinema, across and over to Glasgow, in a humble little apartment owned by one... And I did save you for last because it's been so long since I've said it, and I really just want to dig in. Evan Kelp. Hell yeah. We're back, baby. Kelp. <laughs> it's a little discreet apartment in a little plain building. 
front of the mill. Not too nice. Not, not on the bad side of town, but just a little place tucked away that's just for you. And as we look in, we see a site that I was forewarned is so serial killer adjacent that, you know what, we're gonna break convention here and I'm going to ask you to describe what we see as we find Evan. I'll take a second to describe it because Evan doesn't have anyone to talk to, so. <laughs> Just being real, there's there's not a good. We're be, back, baby. It's not, sad. It's sad right away. There's just not an NPC. This lighting? Come on now. Come on. Now. <laughs> Remember the bright pastels? No, they're gone. <laughs> they're gone. <laughs> Uh, walk up building, like old, you know, pre-war building somewhere in Glasgow that has a top floor apartment. So many steps of a walk up in like old rickety place. Uh, as Evan walks in, we see him and he looks different. He's got, he has some belongings, um, which are, the last time we met him at the beginning, he had a, a shopping bag full of socks and underwear. And now he's got his backpack of holding from his ex. No longer has long hair because now he can, has the ability to get regular haircuts, which is why he had long hair in the past. Um, and he got tired of trying new hair and clothing things and being made fun of, <laughs> and it was too much for him to take. So he just has a uniform, which is sort of soft blacks on everything, like black jeans, black wingtip shoes, black t-shirt, black hoodie, black wool overcoat for the rain. And he comes and you can see the only thing under his hoodie that's not a sort of soft, muted, nondescript black is uh, um, his uh, attendant uniform from the petrol station where he works. The room is completely barren, except for a Wi-Fi router and modem in the corner, and uh, sort of horrifying shapes of tape marked with runes and writing that make just bizarre alien shapes that stretch from the floor to the ceiling and the ceiling up and above and everywhere around. And in the middle of the room, there is a small stand that plugs in and there are a couple of cameras and motion sensors on the stand looking out around the apartment. And he finishes checking on his phone with a screen, which was his gift from <laughs> Sam, uh, finishes checking the security app to make sure that no motion or anyone was detected while he was away. And as he moves into the apartment, he immediately in the quietness of this space, moves over to the counter where there's a small, strange shape, reaches into his backpack of holding, takes out a small Bluetooth speaker, puts it and it fills a section of the tape shape. And as he takes his hand off, because it leaves his person, it suddenly has a shadow that fills the rest of the tape shape. All of the shapes are places to put things that he carries in his bag that as soon as he lets go of them, the shadow will fill up the rest of the space in the tape. So he takes the, <laughs> so he- This is so good. Uh, what? <laughs> he has the speaker on kind of quiet, but immediately puts on a playlist of hype music, and then everything that he has is either disposable or um, tough, yeah. right? Shoes are tough, coat is tough, t-shirt disposable, socks disposable. I think he takes an air mattress and a little battery powered motor to start filling up an air mattress, has a fitted sheet around it, it's a little like twin air mattress, uh, and he goes to a corner and puts up a little chimeron pennant that says, mess with the goat, get the horns. You unpack your life and fill up your small space with the things that make this home, but you take it with you. Because even now, with all of the things you do and you've seen and the like life you've made for yourself, it's really hard to drop the instincts that have kept you alive until now. Stay light, stay mobile, stay useful, stay busy. You just got back from a shift at a petrol station. And two days before that, you were running errands for Dr. Boodle, running up to his spot with Stitch Knit up at the Faroe Islands and moving things around to Iceland, communicating with Tunavik or whatever's left of it. 
Why do you stay so busy? What do you think? There's nothing pleasant in rest. I think that he has music playing almost right away when he gets home. The bed starts to inflate, takes out a very small screen that can fit through the opening of a backpack, takes out a console, loads up Fortnite. That's so um, good, let's go. <laughs> I got that Fortnite coin. Dude, of course, it it's been, it would have been amazing. Yes. It would have course. been insult. But here's the thing: is he, it's the first bit video game he ever played, it be, and he because he thought it would be rude not to play it. And <laughs> now, <is> free. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think he has the music playing. He's playing the video game. Everything is quiet because he doesn't want to be a bad neighbor, and he doesn't want to be noticed, and he wants to have his wits about him. And I think that he will play Fortnite way, way late, and then when he can't physically stand the big overhead light anymore, because all the lights in the place are not, he doesn't have any standing lamps, it's all like the overhead, he'll get into his air mattress, and he has a uh, sort of cheap blanket, but it's actually kind of nice to him, even though it's like, you know, it's like, it's very puffy, it's made out of fake shit, but it's yeah. very puffy and cheap and nice, and it just has little goats on it, which really like has some like farmyard animals. And as he goes to bed, he gets out his phone and will scroll like TikTok or Reels or something until the sun comes up. You finish your little process and there's a moment in transition when bed calls because it hurts to like affect staying awake and your eyes glance out at everything and that light is so bright. I need a mark roll. Difficulty of 14. Mark difficulty 14. Um, you know what? I'll burn one and, and have a lucky break. Amazing. So that's an A, and you said 14? Mm -hmm. So this needs to be a six or higher. Six. That's a three, I don't make it. It's okay. You stare out at the shadows perfectly in their place. There's something to the prescribed order of where you've put everything. And the thing that you know about brains that will create something in stillness and in rest. You think you see a shadow get just a little too long for a second? Then it goes away, it seems fine. You move on, cuddle up in your little bed and then you hear as you're scrolling, nothing new in the group chat, nothing new or interesting online, the sound of something alighting on your windowsill, that open window. <laughs> oh, <laughs> immediately. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I am ready to attack whatever is in the space. You hear it land, and then you see, as you're pointing and waiting, a little wing, waves from just outside of your view. And slowly, a little origami storm petrel peeks around, gives you a little head. An origami storm petrel? Yeah, it's a very, it's like a little seven inch bird that exists in the Faroe Islands. And when Dr. Bull, this is the thing you would know because you have stayed around. You stayed around Gaupenny. Now who's got bird facts? <laughs> Wow. You think I was gonna show up to this season? Yeah, you called ours birds. Yeah. <laughs> you called his a storm petrel. That's because Evan's the reason it is that bird. One of the first big problems, Galpenny broke. You were there working as a custodian when it happened. The last quake that made it so clear to everyone that whatever was happening as the magic was changing, Galpenny became unstable. And you were working as a custodian, you stayed, you graduated, people moved on and you stayed. But Boodle has always looked out for you and as he moved out and away, he of course offered and extended that hand to you and you saw it. Things were becoming difficult within this wizarding community and the first to go were the owls disenchanted, they could not be sort of bade to do anything, to send messages. And as the storm was building, and you know about the storm, you had to find a way to communicate because there were still people that you liked, that you knew, that you went to school with, that you went to work with, 
that stayed within the thing that built around the school that broke. And then you split the difference because you remembered that short distance messages were usually sent by like little paper airplanes and they got around and they moved through magic and the world just fine. And together you developed a little bird, a reminder of the communication that was something new to try to weather the way magic is now. And this little bird knows the deal. There have been many birds before that learned the lesson the hard way. And it peeks around, and hops forward. Hey, hey, little guy. Oh, I'm sorry, come in, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. And you see a sort of expanding of like the space made in its chest as it almost gives a little sigh and it doesn't make any like bird sounds, but you hear the sort of like gentle crackle and exhale as it comes in and flaps and lands on your hand. He looks around at the stuff that's around here and opens the, the bird around with a sense of like, thank God something's happening. Yeah. Uh, it unfolds quickly. And this is a note from someone who communicates with you often uh, that is not trying to affect a sense of uh, familiarity. Evan, earliest convenience, got a project. Evan folds up the bird and just writes, on my way, and and I think Evan immediately gets his whole life deflated, everything in the bag, <laughs> the, the Wi-Fi thing and the cameras and motion sensors. He doesn't even, he has compartmentalized those. Those aren't his belongings because he can't take them with him. Those live at the apartment. He puts everything back in the backpack and pulls out a long wooden rod and then the bristles of a push broom, <laughs> screws the rod in, goggles, electronic compass, <laughs> Uh, analog material compass, uh, rain slicker on the broom, out the window. <laughs> it was not raining. I just want to be very clear about that. <laughs> I won't be able to change if it hits midair. Fair enough. Be uh, ready. Always be ready. <laughs> <laughs> you take off, and as you go, uh, the little bird that went to go, like, take off and give the message back sees how quickly you followed and instead diverts and lands at the tip of your broom and will fly back with you. I'll give it a little pat. Way to go, buddy. And it just hunkers down. <laughs> kind of gives you a look. You know what? Luck track. We're just gonna say it. rains. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> knew it. You get, <laughs> you get out over the open ocean and yeah, move through some squalls. Your bird stays safe, you stay safe, and you very quickly arrive where you all were headed. The very southern island of the Faroe Islands. You land, it takes you. <gasps> you land just as the sun is rising and it is a gray, rainy day here. It's a town of a couple hundred people called Sumpa. And you, Sumpa? Yeah. Sumpa. You arrive at Sumpa at the very southern tip of Suteroy, and you make your way past the sort of edge of the like little red, uh, brightly colored buildings and the little town on a dock looking out over the ocean. And you see all of these beautiful sea stacks and cliffs and formations and birds and life and nature and greenery and push past it to a little cottage at the end of a road that goes from paved to dirt, now muddy. And just a little yellow and blue home with Dr. Boodle, who as you walk up at crunching on the pavement, immediately throws open the door. Evan! Dr. B! Hi! Oh, it's so good to see you. Hi, you are wet. I sent a plane ticket. My 
documents are all forgeries mm -hmm. uh, because I'm a non-existent person legally. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I basically just have the things I need to uh, have a place of residence and work in the UK. But I am American and I'm registered as American. And so a passport is something that I um, uh, fly. And also I have a bunch of weapons in my backpack. So flying is... Um, what do we say about the weapons? Uh, well, you say one thing about the weapons. Yeah. I, I say what did different. I say? What have I said about the weapons? You said the weapons are not uh, necessary that or are... uh, recommended. Yeah. yeah. That you're, the, the tasks that you engage with don't require bladed and blunt instruments, I think. I think. Yeah. And... Yeah. That's far. Why don't you come in? Thank you. I'm gonna make you, have you eaten? Do you need anything? I'm starving. I would love something. Yeah, absolutely. David uh, is over. Uh, he's off the island. He's with Maddie. They're doing some, uh, it's, it's school stuff. He, she's thinking about doing college in the US. Well, I don't recommend that. <laughs> <laughs> what? What do you mean? What do you mean? Well, Are you, okay. I'm not gonna get alarmist. I am, this is my, we talked about this, this is my first experience with parenthood. I'm trying to be a good partner. It's great and I want to be here for it. She's moving on and I need to know right now if you're being sort of alarmist or telling me a thing I need to know and communicate to him. Cause I'm already spinning up here in a big way and everyone's gonna be here soon and I just need to. So college diploma is a predictor for success but that's not necessarily um, rigorously applied against the other economic factors that would make someone success. In other words, if you are from a wealthy family, you will go to college, so is that predictor uh, uh, worthwhile? But uh, there's basically only three reasons to go. Uh, uh, one would be you're studying a trade that you actually have to learn in mm -hmm. an academic uh, higher institution. Mm -hmm. You know, Law and medicine are the sort of classic examples. Number two would be actually sort of expanding your horizons, in which case, if you're gonna go, you should go to a state school because there's not actually a difference in terms of quality of education. It's sort of uh, scandalous it's and a uh, scam. <laughs> and then number three would be uh, uh, basically the, um, uh, oh, some schools, they don't put it in the brochure, but what they're hey, selling Evan, is- Hey, Evan, what do you think, is one of your three things, maybe she was raised inside of a society that has crumbled in a pretty fundamental way in the last couple of years, and maybe spending some more time uh, within institutions that can teach her sort of NAMP normalcy might be a good thing for her? Do we think that falls? I'm not trying to bring you any energy. What do you, yeah, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make a sandwich. I'm gonna make a sandwich, do you? That hadn't occurred to me, what you said. Okay, I'm just, she's just, she's she's 17, she's about to like go into the world and she's gonna be an adult and like, what do you do if you don't have a, I just want her to have a good life. Yeah, hey, <laughs> when you crack that riddle. <laughs> do you like mustard? I don't remember if you like mustard. Love mustard. Okay, he's gonna continue making you a sandwich. I have something kind of crazy to ask you. You know what, I'm gonna wait for you all to sort of get here. I really thought you were gonna be arriving later today so it could kind of happen all at once. Um, and you see that like Dr. Brutal looks so nervous and frazzled. You like peeking into the house, like it's only a couple rooms and you have an eyeline on all of them from sort of your spot at the like kitchen island. And you see that the place that he's been stockpiling and storing and doing all of his research, all of the bits and bobs of magical ephemera that he was able to take with him from Galpenny, everything's in disarray. There's papers everywhere and stacks and stacks of the like dark gray paper used to make those origami birds. Just preparing to send more messages. Um, well, yeah, we, I guess you can wait for the rest of the pilot program. Want some coffee? Do you want anything else? Sure. Okay. I'll ne I will never turn down an offer. So whatever is good, I'll have it. Evan, that's concerning. Okay. You seem yeah. nervous. Is everything all right? <sighs> yes. Uh, things aren't going well with Boudica, and I'm just running out of options. Things aren't going well? She doesn't agree, and I just need to 
There's a conversation that needs to happen, and I don't know if I can do it, so I was hoping you would. Do you want to go with me to go pick up people from the airport? Do you want to go together? Yes. Do you ever say no? No, this is a funny opportunity for me. There you go. Yeah, what are you going to do? Let's go to the airport. <laughs> I feel like somehow you sidestepped that. <laughs> Incredible. And as he, like, picks up his sort of raincoat to go outside and jump in, like, an old 1990s Ford Bronco that's been sort of painfully maintained. Uh, he puts his hand on your shoulder, just says, we have to figure something out. I don't think we can keep going on like this. No, um, I'm, I've tried to be as helpful as I can. I've, I've gotten- You've done everything. Everything you needed me to get, I wanted to get, and everything hopefully is building up to being able to um, fix what got broken. I think we can fix it. I think we just need a little more help. Well, great. If, if, uh, if the pilot program's on the way back, then I have a ton of, I, I would be optimistic. You hop in the car and very quickly, Boodle lapses into silence. And it's not a short drive, but he's so focused. You see him almost like muttering things under his breath, like preparing a speech or a spiel to give. Is there anything Evan would like focus on or try to do like in the intervening time? Boodle's like muttering to himself and having a hard time. I think he'll look at Dr. Boodle and try to like analyze him in a maybe disconcerting way of being like, if he's like muttering and kind of spacing out, Evan's gonna be like, Go ahead and give me, we're gonna say mind roll, difficulty of 12. I'm going to have it and succeed. That's right, the half mechanic works. You just sort of watch him and analyze. And this is a person that, I don't know if you have a lot of experience of someone keeping information from you for any other reason than to sort of protect you from it. There's something like, it's a little condescending, you are a full adult, but it is inherently protective. Things have not been going well. You see, like, the very specific formation of his lips around Boudica and convincing and finding and understanding and research. You've done as much as could be expected of you to try to help assist the things that have been broken. And this is very clearly someone who's about to throw a Hail Mary. I'll observe all of that, get self-conscious because he doesn't want to share it with me, turn the radio on, flip, 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 flip. I don't want to be anything. <laughs> and I'm going to I take hate a, a world in which Nickelback gets played. <laughs> well, that's Gavin. In the f um, yeah. <laughs> oh, sweet, bear. Damn, I got caught. Um, you can take a magic moat for that. Thank you. Uh, and then I'm gonna open my phone, open a library app, and keep reading a book about some arcane weird thing. Just be like, well, no, he doesn't wanna talk to me. All right, radio, <laughs> phone. The time passes, and eventually you're at a small little airfield, and the four of you who have had to take a flight to Copenhagen, his the Faroe Islands are technically a part of Denmark, but it's like an autonomous set of islands. Easiest way to get to the middle of nowhere in the Northern Atlantic Ocean is to stop there first and take puddle jumpers to like the main island and then a smaller one to a little airfield here at the Southern tip. And all of a sudden, three years, it feels like just a couple days. And the four of you are standing on a tarmac in the rain together again for the first time in years. Damn, I promised my boys I was gonna bring back champagne. There was no champagne Dude. on that flight. I'll tell you that. There wasn't any Oh, shit! Here we go. Oh. What's up, What's man? up, baby? Uh, oh. Big hug. Uh, I'm gonna do back, like, you th no champagne? Did you, how long was the layover in Copenhagen? I mean, 
that there's plenty of time there. But I thought, I thought, I told my boys, I was like, damn, I got multiple connected flights. That's multiple business classes. But there was really only one business class to Copenhagen, and then a bunch of small, yeah, 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 prop, prop propeller engine flights where I was like, I'm gonna die. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I made it, dog. Wow. Uh, Kay pulls off a VR head to <clears throat> and, and Incredible. Oh, yes. Hello. <laughs> Gang, it's so good to see you. Oh, oh, Jammer. Yeah, good to see oh, you. Jammer. Oh. I've been keeping up with your scores with basketball. It's fantastic. You're doing a fantastic job. Have you considered using mathematics to up your game? Oh. Uh. Uh, no, but I'm... Uh, Amazing, we can crunch the numbers. Yeah, we'll get into it. Sam! Oh, honey! Oh, hey, give me, give me, give me! Hug, 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 hug. Oh, of my life! Oh, I missed you so much. You look amazing. Oh, Thank you. You look amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Jammer, congratulations. Do you get to play with Angel Reese? I love her so much. Uh, no, because we're on different teams and playing different leagues. She's <laughs> honestly like better than most of my team. I will be like an honor. But and respect, dude. Your clips are going viral like constantly, dude. Tony Danza out there singing by himself. I that shit was hilarious. He's so nice. You should come meet him. Tony's great. Wow, <sighs> shit. You know Tony Danza? Yeah, he does look at Gabagool. He does a what? I don't know. That's what they call it. Gabagool? Capicol. Capicol, yeah. Yeah, it's meat. Meat! He does good meat. Sick! <laughs> of course Tony Danza does good meat, He dog. always has meat. It's really good meat. It's been a couple weeks. Good to see you, Sam. It's been so good to see you. How have you been? You settling in? Uh, oh, yeah. Cozy, comfy. K, good to see you. Hey, Evan, you are looking well. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> Yo, I need Jammer and Sam to absolutely Please. give me a mark roll right It's now. safe. You're looking oh, well? You're looking yeah, well. Course. What? Oh, Difficulty oh, of like four. Uh, I only got... A two. I got a two. I'm gonna. We're, we're succeeding this. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. We're succeeding. I'm, <laughs> I'm real nosy. Great. This is going to be more of a jump in on both of your minds. We're gonna treat this like an insight check. What is the expression that everyone reads on Kay's face? Um, well, first of all, I am wearing uh, anti-surveillance makeup, so it's a little harder to clock exactly okay, what's impressive. happening. Um, but uh, also, uh, I'm 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 very casual, very casual, uh -huh. incredibly casual, intensely casual, intensely casual. And what are they getting off of Evan? There's a meeting coming up with Dr. Boodle that all four of us are going to be at. Nothing is going to happen in this meeting at the airport that is going to be so awkward that we're not going to get there. So I think you watch Evan go like, okay, you're going to see Kay again. Just be polite and, and just move through this space uh, without being strange like don't basically just like don't do too much now just like this moment is going to happen and then later it will be over great totally casual vibes everybody's face is so structured right now <laughs> i don't think either one of them have like cracked it like feels like it's like it's like an architect made a structure of a smiling kind of chill face yeah it's like, can you can you reverse Botox, where Botox only makes things move and smile and stay that way? Seems like, to be possible. Yeah. You hear the slamming of doors as Boodle has finished grabbing all of your lug luggage from this like last puddle jumper and has thrown it in the back uh, and just is waving. Right, Pseudo Roy ain't ready, dog. <laughs> hey, hey, Dr. Boodle, it's lovely to see you. There's a bunch. Come in, I've got so much to tell you about and you're in, uh, it's, uh, hi! It's hey, so good to see what's you. What's up, dude? Hi. Dr. B. Sorry, I didn't call you dude like that. No, it's fine. I'm not. I'm just. I'm just. I'm just Dr. B now. So he just like call. But can we call you by your name, or do we have to call you Dr. B? Hmm. Huh. I like that I got my PhD. So I'm gonna ask that maybe just Dr. B is good. Respect. Thanks. Thank you. Super's a lot of fun. Super. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot to do here. Uh, I actually do need to do a little bit of sightseeing. Can we get in the car? We got things to sure, do. Sure, let's Man, do it. Arctic turns. 
uh, storm petrels. Uh, I saw a puffin. Oh, uh, so many puffins. They eat puffins here. Like the cereal? They eat them? Mm-hmm. So the cereal's named after a bird, which is basically a... They're like penguins, but they got little beak. And northern. Yeah. yeah. Sick. <laughs> this place is cool. <laughs> And as you guys get in, you are taken across like scenic countryside and almost terrifyingly windy roads as the weather like worsens. And you are taken past like scenic cliffs till eventually you come down to a low area and a little dock. And Dr. B kind of turns and goes, I was hoping, <laughs> I was hoping there would be better weather, but what I need to show you and sort of ask of you requires that we get on a boat, if that's okay. I don't... It's okay, I have not felt the rain on my face in quite a long time. Can I be real? Yes. Mm, you stink. No. You can't... I, I mean, no, I'm not, I'm not your teacher, real. you can We're have all inside whatever a conversation. Not, I, I just want you to know in case you don't know. I appreciate your honesty. I just had to say it, you know? Because we're, we're all thinking it, right? You can't put that on me in the context of <laughs> what's happening. Come on, y'all. Y'all don't smell that. Uh, let's get on the boat. I'm holding a pig. <laughs> so, yeah. How Dr. B has Terminator like Terminator barrel rolled out of this to avoid the conversation. T2 is there. Uh, Teddy has been sort of uh, within a beautiful flap of your sleeves and has not poked his head out. And yeah, Boodle uh, like kind of moves to the end of a slip and there's a little dinghy and it's motorized, but there is no over cover. So you guys are sodden as he takes you out around the bay and towards a bunch of like sea stacks and island formations. And a sea stack is like those little like sort of pillars of island that uh, are never big enough for people to really like do anything or be on that sort of project out of the island. And he takes you out and sort of looks at you and he's like, I didn't really get a chance to tell you about this the last time you were in town because you were uh, running things for me. But I did find some research about this sort of stack over here. And he points at one that's wider than a lot of the other ones you've seen. If you could get a little closer, it would maybe be probably like 50 feet across, but it's an arch and there's like open air under it. And he pulls up the boat and stops and you guys are kind of just drifting on water that's getting choppier and choppier. It's just like, okay, this is kind of, sorry, again, I thought this was gonna be more scenic. Uh, this is something I found in an old language uh, Best I can interpret, it's it's Serpent's Watch. Serpent's Watch. Serpent Eye. Something that doesn't matter. But it can do this. He like pulls out his wand and it's inter like laced and wrapped in very delicate, uh, sort of like British ivy climbing up a like almost ebony colored wand. And he just points it and attempts magic. Nothing happens. You see a lot of things wash over his face, frustration, a little embarrassment, something that as a, one of your teachers at Galpenny, just shouldn't happen. And he tries again. And one more time, then you see it, a filminess across that inner arch, like a massive soap bubble being stretched across the like craggy face. And he's like, oh, I just ran a little off. And he like turns the engine on again and gets you in front of it so you can look through it. And it's like a telescope limbed in rainbow that sort of pushes across the open water. You can only see a couple hundred yards into the open sea, but then you feel it, like something at the edge that lets you know that you're being zoomed towards something, that this unbroken gray and choppy water is actually farther and farther afield until there's something there within the gray. Evan, you recognize this. If not by vision, but then by reputation, this massive storm, clouds and debris and rainwater and seawater pushing uh, 
perfectly horizontally, tearing up so high that it looks like it touches whatever the edge of the sky is and turns far below the water. So, this is the thing. In that direction, at the center of whatever that storm is, is Gaupenny. What? Those earthquakes. When we left, something happened. There's a storm. It's best we know, and it's hard to get close. Hundreds of miles across. Okay. Hundreds of miles across. But, at this, but you're certain that at the center of it, Gao Penny is there? Yeah. Because there's people in it, too. Whatever's happening inside there, there are places. It's a storm. It's a vortex. But there's pe people. People were there when it happened, and people go there now. They're drawn there. Boudicca and some of the other wizards uh, that chose to stay behind have found their way to islands in there. And all of the birds, those birds you got, they, because they are magic and the storm is magic, they can pass through, but mundane things, things from, from this world don't usually survive contact in there. But that's the thing I have to ask you, and I'm, I just want to be so clear. It feels terrible and unfair of me to ask you this, but I'm just out of options. I've been trying to communicate with Boudicca and some of the other uh, magical community about turning the thrust of their study away from reclaiming the magic that was. It's gone, it's, it's gone. But if we could figure out what this is, whatever is left, whatever we have, if we knew how it worked, maybe we could build a future where magic can be for everyone and we can understand it and use it and make everyone's life better. Maybe we can't make the world we had before. And I think it's okay that we don't have the world we had before. But I can't convince her. I'm not your teacher anymore. I can't tell you what to do. I can command you to action. And I can be very honest when I say Boudicca is a stone cold bitch and doesn't listen. Yeah, we know, she's so mean. But I think if not her, you guys changed the world in months by just talking to the other students there, to the other people there. And if you can, I need you to go into the storm and find Boudicca and the wizards there and convince them. I, I, I have a question. Sure, yeah, yeah, of course. There's so many questions. Yeah, just, oh my God, just, yeah. Just a quick one, just because. No, yeah. Um, so nothing from the material world can get in there? It's more like boats or planes. Okay. But we can get into there. Oh, oh my God. Oh, and yeah. Yes. Will we be naked? Because what? this is from naked? the mo like the the non-magical world. Oh. So if we go in there, like, will my clothes melt off? Yeah. <laughs> Also, you know, electronic devices do <laughs> Your clothes and electronic devices will be fine. Okay. Uh, I mean, I would have been okay with it. Yeah, like, I'll no, be naked for magic. Be, it no, was not a deal breaker. Be, don't be okay with being naked. You don't have to be okay with that. No, it'd be If fine. you want to be yeah, naked, yeah. you can be naked. Do not be fine with ending up naked. I'm, I'm not your teacher. You can do whatever you want. I'm being quiet, but I was really grateful that you asked that question because I was also worried the storm was going to zap my clothes off. Well, I just want to be prepared, right? Like, if it's going to, then we could take something that would be from there and then we could, like, drape ourselves. Yeah, like, you got to know if it's like Terminator rules or not, you know? You got to know yeah. Terminator rules. Always got to ask if it's Terminator rules. Yeah. Boodle's looking at you like, you were my hope to be <laughs> normal. 
Okay. I don't know, man. Is this like dangerous? I'm not gonna lie to you. I. I think there is danger there because it's the unknown and I don't know what's on the other side of it. And yeah, I don't think I ever apologized to you all. You were brought to Galpenny because everyone thought you were the worst people for the job of what? proving. Yeah, yeah, you kind of get that, right? You force, but okay. Okay. I don't, I don't like hearing that out loud. Okay, I'm I, sorry. Yeah, I, I mean, like, I, we kind of knew, yeah. but you didn't have to. I feel like I'm really from like the bad woman, <laughs> yeah. but it's it's like it's hearing from like, like our friend is is kind of like. No, I, I didn't. I, God. Like you also were like uh, all damn. <laughs> no, I mean a little. You did show oh. up in basketball shorts. Oh. No, I'm sorry. Oh, I don't mean wow. that in a bad way. Well, I, I feel like I'm fucking the bad guy. I'm making this bad. Your shit away. <laughs> Yeah, you is... don't have toilets in your buildings. So for you, even the guy who's on our side, to have anything to say about basketball shorts is way over the line. It's my man over there. Okay. Yeah, I will go. But also, <laughs> I think... <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> wait, what did you say? Hey. Okay. Okay, what did you say? Jammer, Jammer has not said that he will go. <laughs> yeah, I want to be clear. <laughs> that was, you were so Great. confident. Uh, Boodle no. immediately takes the boat and starts booking it back oh. towards the main line. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> we're doing it. Yeah, keep talking amongst yourselves. I got the yes. <laughs> but we, oh. I'm gonna take out my phone and prepare a fake email address to email the gas station with a forged hospital report in case I don't make it back and don't wanna lose my job. So you gotta let the petrol station know that you got hit by a car so they won't fire you so you go back to work at the petrol station after the dangerous mission. Yeah. What's the sister's email? Melissa Kemp. <laughs> I bet. Kate, I don't know if I want to go on a mission. <laughs> Uh, oh, I just, well, you know, I was like, I thought, I honestly thought we were going to be doing something more chill, you know, seeing cereal birds or whatever, and just kind of hanging out. Uh, I don't, like, I'm supposed to be back working out. I don't mean to cut you off. I'm so sorry. I, I am still, I'm just right here, and I yeah. know you have to talk amongst yourselves. I did get the yes, and I am really banking hard on that, but I do want to say, my best understanding is this is just a couple days. You got a couple days? Yeah, I got a couple days. Yeah, you know, spring break's 10 days. So if it's just a couple days, we'll hang out, see some cereal birds, save magic or something, and then I'll be back in time for summer leagues. That I can do. Great. Great. Sam just like pulls out her phone. It's like, call Jamie Thorpe. <laughs> Calling Jamie Thorpe. Hello. Hey, Jamie. Hi. Hey, Hi, it's, Sam, are you? it's Sam Britton. Yeah, yes, I know. Oh, I know. From it's, the from the show yeah, that we were on. Yeah, from the show you left. How yeah. Are you, how are you? Good. I'm, so Where I'm are gonna, you? I'm gonna be. Uh, uh, I'm in Sumter or something. I'm gonna be gone Sumter. for like a couple days. What do you mean? So there's like um like a magic like whirlpool and like a horrible teachers in it, and we have to like go there for some reason. Okay, I feel like I'm being pranked. There's a bird here that's named after cereal. There's a cereal here that's named after a bird. We don't have the cereal here. We just have the bird. <laughs> we don't have the cereal. You guys don't we have just puffins have the bird. Here? No, they don't have puffins. It's puffins. It's an American brand. Go somewhere where there are puffins. Uh, yeah, but I'll totally be back. Just have Tony take over the week. He doesn't work here. No, but he, he has a jazz career. I know. I really. just found out. I've been talking to him for a day and a half, and he will not stop talking. Well, he just keeps Thelonious text Monk. He keeps texting me in scat. I think he wants to practice. We should let him practice scat. Okay, I... I'll talk to you when I get back. No, Tony I Danza don't. Danza texts you in scat. <laughs> <laughs> he spells it out phonetically. Yeah. See, look. Uh, who? Who? Beedle, the... boop, bop, you know. Skipping the, it's yeah. wild that from the text, just the phonetics of the letters he's choosing, I can tell that he's not a natural. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's 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 effort. It's a lot it's of effort. Now, uh, we're really uh, supportive. Uh, 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 
Jamie, hello. You do not know me, and you do not need to know my name, but just know that I am a fan and a great supporter and, and a dear friend of Sam's. You should run a best of clip show. That should last for a week if, if necessary. Hey, that's actually a very good idea. Yes, very good. Yeah, run the clip show. No, the one we made if she died. I'm sorry, the one you made if I what? Great, see you in 72. I'm sorry, the one you made, oh, and that's gone. Okay. Um. Well, I guess I'm also covered if I die, so that's... All right. Good to know. Just give me a moment. Oh. I'm going in. All right. Okay, I'm pushing live the updates for the ARG. Kurds, and do you know the way? All right. Uh, the it's at glass. this point while this is happening, and Kay is truly just sitting in the dinghy by themselves. Uh, Teddy's gonna just appear out of a sleeve and just sort of walk forward in front of all of you, like, hello. So nice to see you again. Oh, hi. shit. Yeah, hi. Yeah, it's, it's, oh, Jammer, it's really, it's good to see you. Hi, hi. Uh, they'll be doing this for a little while. Cannot be traced. Is this yeah. happen This happens a lot? It's mostly this, All yeah. Right. All right. I just play Balloon How are they getting signal out here? I mean, for the VR, that's incredible. I don't know. I'm in. Also, is it not, is water, is water resistant? I don't know. Yeah, it's coming down. It's uh, Evan's going right. to take his rain <laughs> slicker and just like, boom, throw it over. <laughs> so, Best I can tell, this is gonna happen. He once again pulls out his grandpappy's oversized pocket watch. Oh God, I forgot how cute you <laughs> are. Thank you. It's just been a minute, man, you, you know? I'm oh not around God. magic shit that often, you know? God damn. And the little pipe bubbles come out. He starts oh, smoking his little God, pipe. I swear. The yellow brick road. All right, and we're we're live. Oh, this one was faster. I thought okay. Was another, like, five minutes. Let's do this. All right. Okay. Uh, Dr. Boodle has like moved onto the dock and moves over to like a massive set of like blue utility tarps and just. So the reason, <sighs> this is what I was meaning to say earlier before I absolutely bungled it um, with all of you. <sighs> before you were called in because everyone thought you were the wrong people for the job. And for my part in that, I am sorry too. But I do believe with my whole heart that you are the exact right people for this. And it's not just because this thing has exactly four seats and rips off the tarp. And you see in front of you, like a top, but with four little handle sets and pedals like a bike pointed inward. Some of you are 21, some of you are in college and have been out in the world and have maybe experienced the joy and magic of a pedal pup. Those little bikes that you ride around and apparently your pedaling helps, but probably not. <laughs> and this thing, again, so strangely shaped and weirdly balanced, Boodle sort of slaps the edge of it. It's dark wood and old iron. He says, okay, so here's the thing. All of the things that were made before magic broke, anything that was made of magic uh, and not something mundane and enchanted, all of that magic stayed. And in the last couple years, most things are grabbed and stripped for parts and taken to make something new, uh, to recycle and try to hold on to some of what was. Uh, and this is apparently transport. And if I'm being totally honest, um, kind of whimsical even by wizard standards. And that's saying something. Yeah, yeah, we can just call that what that is. Uh, but if you sit on it and you pedal, the pedals just, I don't think the pedals, what makes it run? It's magic and you do have to pedal, but it'll work. And I think it will allow you to move through the storm unscathed with your clothes and your tech intact. I've put on 
to it anything I thought could be useful to you. And yeah, uh, uh, come with me. And he starts to like kind of climb up on it and gives you a tour of this thing that looks like it's been made of pieces of old magic and furniture and raw iron from different ages. And you see at the center of it, what could best be described as an orrery system of orbs in relation to one another, standing over an ancient medieval sort of marginalia zodiac. I think this is our best chance at a map of what's going on inside. I'm not sure I haven't been in there. And again, I can't operate this alone. I'll give you everything I can, a map, and the thing I need you to deliver. Even if you can't convince them, it's fine. It's not a mission failure. I just need you to see this. I call it Tabby. <laughs> and, Tabby? Yeah, Tabby. Um, I pulled it out when we were leaving during the earthquake. I was kind of just grabbing uh, anything that wasn't nailed down. And it took until pretty recently before I got it to respond. And he gestures at some like awkwardly uh, sort of welded on, strapped in stone uh, that's sitting inside the orrery and goes, so I need you to deliver these two pieces to Boudica because I think if I can't convince her with words about what to do for the greatest good, then maybe I can bribe her with a magical thing. And uh, this is very good and it's uh, super helpful. That right yeah, there? yeah, it's it's magical and it does a thing. And it's, that one too. Yeah, they both do. Can you? You just have to turn on, please. It is. A, it's a really weird, stubborn thing. Um, but if it, it, I think it's enough that she can use it as a resource. It, it doesn't matter. Just go in, deliver this. Try to convince them to be different and uh, something. This is my last shot. Your words. Oh, ah! this, what? <laughs> oh, it's on. Great. Um, hi. Can you just explain really quickly? Can it? Please. Please. It's oh. fine. No, it's hey, yo, oh, is this oh, thing oh, about it, to talk? It, hello? Is it really gonna talk? I just, like, Sometimes it I'm is. not it's ready if it talks. It's about to talk. I'm it's not about ready if it talks. Tabby, we, we had a conversation with a chipmunk less than 15 That's minutes ago. Chill. Just uh. do it, please. You can talk. You're making me look bad. I understand. Oh my fucking god. Thank you. Dude, what Thank the you. fuck? Thank you. So, on? exactly. Oh. Don't turn off. <sighs> okay, anyway. I you tell it, me that rocks could talk sometimes? Yeah, I can't. It understands. Uh, it can help. It uh, has information. It's from something very old that was a part of the castle that was sort of upturned when everything was break. It would be better if you, whatever. Please deliver this to Filtrum and try to convince her or the others to take up the task of figuring out the new magic. I think this can help if it wants. Will you go? Look. Kind of program. Can we have like a quick like yeah, I'm team gonna, oh, meeting? No. Just a quick huddle? Oh, oh, side bar. I'm sure we want to This shit is weird, dog. I love him. Oh, the rock? Yes. <laughs> I want to talk to The Rock. Oh my God, y'all like The Rock? I'm gonna read, I'm he gonna- He ain't got a big pocket watch or a grandpappy. Well, we don't know that. Not fair. <laughs> we don't know how many things The Rock can say. <laughs> so you want to get years of your interest <laughs> kind of the depth? Maybe it can say awesome different stuff. Maybe we should ask it if it can say, come on closer, Tony Danza. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's That's hold me good. closer, Tony Danza. Well, not the way Tony Danza sang it on Britain's Got Magic. It's true. But that was like sung about 20 or 20, 23. He was he was running on the <laughs> He looked bad. <laughs> he looked bad. The makeup yeah. had sweat off. <laughs> he was stumbling around. It was, <laughs> it was so, looking amazing. Why didn't they cut to commercial? I truly. I got like some really weird texts. I don't know. It was quick a, question. Was great. Are you guys having the conversation on? I the mean, device? we had to climb oh. up on it, right? Mm -hmm. I guess. So Boodle climb down. I didn't. I wouldn't say we climbed down. Uh, I'm gonna look back at Boodle and just say, so we're bringing these two rocks and this um, magic quad cycle with mm -hmm. an orrery in the middle to Boudicca Filtrum. And something about these stones will convince her to do something right. Mm. That's the goal. Rather than entrusting us to blindly carry out a step in a multi-part process, can you confide in us what is supposed to happen and if Boudicca is the one to do it, then great. But if she decides to not be helpful, as I'm worried that she may decide, we might have the potential to do what you need her to do. Okay, that's fair. If you can't convince her or the other wizards, a couple times when I've talked to Tabby, he, it, was convinced that there was something at Galpenny that would help us understand the nature of the new magic, that there might be rules that, if understood, could be widely sort of shared. Great. Thank you. Oh, th I mean, this feels like a slam dunk, right? <laughs> a slam dunk? Right? They don't use a sports <laughs> analogy to try and convince me to do something, because it works, all right? Are we? Evan, okay, you're like, you know, you're like, you got it like going on, you know? This is a good idea. This is straight up a good idea. <sighs> Be real, all right? <laughs> here's, the, here's the thing. It is an incredible idea. I mean... Listen, one of the conditions that, you know, has to be there is that we gotta convince people. And this is the voice of a generation. Okay, as you speak, you feel whatever those motes of magic are, that potential building inside you, a little bit of it lessens. Oh. Sam, mm. you feel the same thing something inside you leached away. Oh, hey. Jammer, you feel it too. <laughs> you all right? And Evan, you feel it. Something taken. Something really important in this world is dying. And this, I don't know what these monsters are, that looks like Tad, but the rest of them, I don't know. It all seems highly improbable, but so did every other element of magic when we got to Galpenny. Something's dying in the world, and does it sound like a good idea? I don't know. Does it sound like our best idea? Sadly, yes. The moment you touch those handles, something begins as this thing that has taken its price and is connected with its user spins to life. Everything. Oh, oh, oh! Oh my God! Oh, hey! Oh, hey! 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 Jump on! Uh, hey. Jump on! This. <laughs> yeah. And you feel yourself immediately pulled into great purpose and rapidly drawn across the ocean and into the storm. <laughs> Everything spins. <laughs> Can anyone see where we're going? No, we're all facing each other. Yeah, yeah, that's what the Tabby. Baby, the rock can steer. The other rock didn't talk yet. Maybe it doesn't speak English. Some of these stones might predate modern English. Oh, um, I may, a may, is a, am, say. 
Wow. That's Latin. That's Latin. Wait, does anyone, does anybody know Aramaic? <laughs> a little bit, not really. I don't know Aramaic. Right now, it's okay. I'm trying to think about the mummy. Yeah. Mummy's great. Mummy's fucking awesome. Oh my awesome. gosh, is she not great. Oh my god, is it masterpiece? I want to have sex it. with both of them. Which two? You move through the storm, and then you see it, a burst of light, a rainbow as you break through and drop through the cloud cover and land somewhere, a little eye of a storm. You're on a shore and look out towards the water and see the storm so close. You're in a pocket of safety and you turn your eye inward to an island covered in heat, pouring lava and almost rumbling under your feet with seismic activity. And you know that you are somewhere very new now. And that's where we're gonna end our first episode of Misfits and Magic. I'll see you next time. Harry got me out of cardio. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute get in our rest. Yes, Woo! Woo! Let's go, we're back, baby! Let's go, we are back. He went into the storm and came out the other side and landed somewhere on the shores of an island covered in haze. You see pools of lava. The secret to being able to survive this place is being strong enough to survive this place. So do you guys need help getting up, or do you got this? I know you don't know who we are, but we're like, we are magic, you know? We're the pilot program. We got this. No fucking way. Tallulah. Okay. Hey, Toulouse. Never liked that nickname. Thank you so much. Hey, Tay Tay. <laughs> oh, it got worse. Hey, we're here. Uh, we're looking for Boudica. <laughs> Delivery for Boudica. <laughs> Oh shit, we're about to do violence. Ooh, and it violence. lunges at you. All right, let's do violence. I was like, what the fuck is sucker? What the fuck, Evan? Yeah. Am I expected to pee in this? <laughs> well, unless you want to waste your own body fluids, um, yeah. Everyone here is really hot and like adventurous. <gasps> we're on the lookout. I'm not, I, 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 I am single and could mingle. Wait, hold on, what's my nickname? Marley. You know Bob Marley? Don't worry. <laughs> Dude, you've had a freaky couple years. <laughs> you just got off the hoopty. Don't freak your old friends out by being immediately violent. I'm gonna kill this shit, man! Oh, 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 I, I fucked up! Oh. <laughs> I'm going to... Here we go. Here we go. Why? Brendan, don't look like that, man. <laughs> what happened? Me looking give, like that is not give the me cause. A truly massive failure. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Something very fishy is going on in this dome. <laughs> More like mischief and magic, am I right? Because it's misfits and magic. Oh, I get it, I get it. That's great, that's so, good. Yes.